Hello! Thank you for coming to this video today, guys. I really appreciate it. We're going to be going over a lot of cool stuff today. We're going to be going over the Ouroboros paper, um, some interesting news on that. We're going to be going over the first ever DAP on your Roy. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool. I'm also going to be showing you guys the voting center in Daedalus um, and a little bit on how that voting is actually going to work. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about Litecoin and Cardano, what's going on um, and kind of the information behind that. But first, before we jump into this video, if you want to support me, the best way you can do so is delegate to Bloom and Bloom 2. Here is both of them on Ada Pools. We have a 2.5 million pledge to secure the network from Sybil Attacks. We also have 3,000 total delegates. Um, it's pretty awesome. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is we're actually at 1,205 total pools in the Cardano ecosystem. That's pretty cool. Um, another thing I've been doing, if you guys are interested in creating your own stake pool uh, with some help, or you would like someone to run and maintain your stake pool for you, feel free to contact me at Peyton at bloompool.io. Peyton at bloompool.io. It's going to be in the bottom of the description down below. But let's jump into the video today. Okay. Let's go to the coolest thing first, in my opinion. So, um, Emergo posted this tweet on October 16th. They said, it's happening. Ergo Platform released its first NFT marketplace DAP auction house as per and developer support for our Cardano Ada Light Wallet Uroi is coming soon. Will this be the first DAP to have Uroi Wallet support? So, I just wanted to show you guys this little screenshot right here. This is pretty awesome. Um, so... If you guys don't know what an NFT is, it's kind of like a decentralized marketplace of sort. Um, and you can buy um, essentially artwork and just like, I think people even said you could buy like, uh, eventually it's going to be like houses and stuff on there. So I'm not too informed on what they are, but it is still pretty cool to see that this may be the first ever dap that your Roy actually supports. So uh, when this does come, I will have a video on this. We're going to be looking at the support for this dap so we can kind of see um, what it's going to look like in the future, you know, when this is actually coming to ADA, because this is specifically on Ergo. So it's not for ADA, it's, a, it's an Ergo DAP. But what they're doing, what Emergo is doing, is they're using Ergo as essentially a test bed to start building some of the support for the Euroi Euro wallet, right? Because if they already know how to build an interface for an NFT marketplace on Euroi, they can essentially just reuse that for ADA on the Cardano protocol when the time comes. Um, it, it, it honestly reminds me of how IOHK or IOHG use the ITN, the incentivized test net, to see how staking works, to see how kind of the culture of staking was, so then they could have a lot of experience and um, to be prepared for when it came for mainnet on the Cardano protocol. And Emergo is doing the same thing. So let me know what you guys think of that down below. I thought that was pretty awesome. According to a recently released ranking by Google Scholar, Cardano's Ouroboros paper is the second most cited academic paper in the crypto and blockchain category with 183 citations. The Ouroboros academic outlines the proof of stake mechanism that is powering Cardano. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that today, just a real quick um, couple sentences on that. But 183 citations on the original Ouroboros paper that powers the proof of stake. I mean, that's, um, that's awesome. You know, I always thought that if Cardano failed, the best thing that came out of it, and this is kind of like the, the silver lining, is the papers, you know. I mean, just, and that's kind of already happened, you know. I always thought the worst case scenario is there's going to be these academic papers that people can cite, and it's essentially the start. You know, they started off with um, what essentially was good and bad about Bitcoin and what can be derived from that, you know, and it's cool that other researchers and, and, and people at universities will actually have the ability to read these papers and work from them instead of just starting from the beginning. Um, so I think that's really awesome. Um, and I think that really provides a lot of uh, really validity on how awesome this stuff is, you know, and it's cool that we actually have Ouroboros um, the code, you know, not just the paper and it's nice to see people citing it. So let me know what you guys think of that down below. I thought that was pretty cool. So I actually had a sponsor of this video today. So we're going to go over it real quick. Bebop Ada Pool. 
Um, big shout out to them. Make sure you guys check out their pool, the Tickers Bebop. Uh, the website will be in the description down below. Um, big shout out to them. Thank you for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Um, as you guys know, YouTube only pays me about three bucks for videos, so individual sponsors on the channel really do help me out. So make sure you guys check out his pool on either Ada Pools or Pool Tool or Daedalus. It's Bebop. So thank you guys. So let's talk about Cardano and Litecoin. What's going on? I'm sure you guys have seen a little bit about this news, but I'm going to try to um, essentially give you all the information that you need. Um, so on the evening of Litecoin's ninth birthday, it seems only fitting that the future of one of the most beloved and trusted cryptocurrencies can also be discussed. Um, I actually do like Litecoin. I do. Um, I always used it, especially in 2017 uh, in the Bitcoin days. It was essentially how I moved funds from one place to another, you know, just the cheap transactions. And because Bitcoin back then was like $10 per transaction. Um, so it was nice to have this small alternative um, to just move funds around. So as many of you already know, Charles Hoskinson, the CEO of IOHK and the creator of Cardano, approached Charlie Lee in early July with the proposal of performing a velvet fork within the Light, Litecoin code to allow for cross-chain communications, improved scalability, and the ability for smart contracts. So this is essentially um, smart contracts are going to be able to be used and Litecoin is going to be over here. So then the two tokens will be inoperable, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, imagine how awesome it's going to be to be able just to trade ADA and Litecoin on the chain. So um, given the opportunity to research and provide inputs into the feasibility, pros and cons of, of such an endeavor, um, I have had a number of informative exchanges with Charles on not just what a Velvet Fork is, but also how it affects the base code. So I went, went ahead and read through this. So I'm going to tell you guys essentially what a Velvet f Fork is, um, which is pretty interesting. And I'm just going to go ahead and read it because the information I think is, is pretty awesome. And it'll tie into some of the things that you guys already know about hard forks and soft forks. So a Velvet Fork is the means by which the action of adding code will take place. It is not a hard fork and it also is not a soft fork. Um, so a hard fork is obviously done by a majority consensus by those with the ability to normally vote on the changes. A velvet fork can be done without this requirement. It will allow, allow clients that upgrade to the new rules to still be compatible with those that do not and adds no rule modifications to the consensus layer. In other, word, in other words, um, I'll just explain this because I think I can explain it better. Um, so when you do a hard fork, right, when Shelly came out, um, we all had to move from Byron, the federated model, to the hybrid um, federated and the stake pool model that we're currently in with Ouroboros, right? So essentially, instead of doing a hard fork where everyone has to change, the whole, the whole protocol has to change and the guidelines that stake pool operators are running on, the guidelines that the wallets are running on, those don't actually change. It's essentially just an addition to what's already there. Um, so it's, it's nice. So all the people that really don't agree with this velvet fork, um, it doesn't. So I found some juicy details on GitHub. Uh, you wouldn't expect it, but this is going to be about the voting center and Daedalus. Voting is actually coming on the 28th of October. The period that we're currently in in Catalyst right now is the assess period. And what the assess period is, is it's a, it's a time where, um, anyone in the community can actually sign up to assess certain proposals and give them a rating from zero to 100. Um, so for example, my Cardano Aura uh, proposal um, is actually getting assessed right now and I can get a rating um, and it's based on impact, audibility, and feasibility. Um, I think it's 50% impact and then 25% the other two. Um, so yeah, that's the period that we're in right now. And then since you guys know, like as I said, the 28th is when you guys will actually be able to vote. Um, they're, they're obviously working on a way for you to vote, you know, so that's the information I have right here. Um, so look, it has its own little, it's its own Daedalus wallet, which is interesting. So application icon, you can see Catalyst Fund 2. Um, it's got its own Daedalus icon, so it's not going to be on the flight candidate, and it's not going to be on the regular Daedalus. Daedalus. So as you can see here, the application theme, um, you can see right here, it says Catalyst at the top, 1.0. Yeah, look, they're pointing that out. And then, yeah, network identifier, that's always important, the main net. And then I think this is when we start to get to the juicy details somewhere down here. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so I did read that. So 
essentially the way this is going to work, um, this is pretty interesting. So essentially you're going to be able to download this voting app um, for Cardano, and then you essentially recover the actual funds that you have into this new Catalyst 2 Daedalus, and then you take that app, you click scan, and you scan a QR code, and that essentially gives you the voting tokens on the app. Um, a lot of people have been asking me questions like specifically about um, how do we vote, um, what, how much funds do we have to have to vote, can we vote with two different wallets, um, so you need at least 8,000 ADA per wallet to vote, but you will be able to vote from two different wallets. Um, the voting process um, is coming out on the 28th. If the Daedalus is released before then, if the app's released before then, just know that I will have a video step-by-step -step on my channel like, similar to the How to Stake videos. Um, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually vote um, yes or no on my proposal. So, yep, let me know what you guys think of this down below. I'm excited for Catalyst Fund 2 Daedalus. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, pool operators, as far as I know, cannot vote in Fund 2. Um, another thing, normally your funds actually get locked up when you vote, but for Fund 2, the funds are not locked up. So. To close out this quick weekly recap, uh, we're going to do the Cardano development update. I do like to do these. Sometimes there's some hidden gems in here, some information that nobody else knows about. Um, so this one's pretty good. The Daedalus team, what's been going on? Um, so the team also re-enabled the stake pool saturation indicator and fixed a minor UI issue with the stake pool tooltip. So this is something that a lot of people have been saying um, is so basic. Why does not, why does Daedalus not have this? You know, um, I honestly think that when you delegate to a stake pool that's saturated, it should give you an indicator that states you will lose rewards from delegating to this pool, you know? So it's nice to see that there's at least an indicator, but I think there needs to be an indicator and also a prompt. Um, another thing that I thought was pretty interesting was the Cardano decentralization team. Um, so they worked on some scripts, uh, the thing that I thought you guys would think was interesting is work is ongoing with transaction generalization to define optional fields, adjusting property tests to multi assets functionality, and some changes to simplify this integration with the consensus. So this is pretty cool. You can see they're working on uh, multi asset functionality, um, and they've had some changes to simplify this um, for when it times to actually come to do that hard fork to allow multi assets and smart contracts. Um, but yeah. That's the quick uh, weekly recap. There wasn't too much news today, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it. Um, if you made it till the end of the video, uh, please type proof of stake down below um, in the comments. And also please click that notification bell. So the bottom right, um, it should be kind of like, I guess I'm, I'm opposite. So it should be like down this way right here. If you click that notification bell, it supports my channel um, a huge amount. I think YouTube loves that little bell for some reason. So clicking that means a lot. But I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. Thank you and goodbye.